Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. The oath which he sware to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Book of Psalms chapter 47 verse 2 For the Lord most high is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. Giving all praise and glory to our power, our God, Yahweh, and the name of his only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, in the name of the Holy Spirit, the Rock Akudash, the Abantai teaches, the head of Apostle Elders of GMS, Great Millstone, and Shalom, to my fellow laborers out there, uh, doing the work in truth and sincerity, and uh, Shalom to your other brothers and your few sisters out there that believe on the gospel. Today I just want to get into a lesson about uh, in, uh, 1 Samuel, the fourth chapter. Let me get it real quick. And it was just, uh, just an account where the Most High had uh, messed up the Philistines, man. And I'm going to hop straight into it. It's uh, 1 Samuel 4. It says, And the word of Samuel came unto all Israel. Now Israel went out against the Philistines to battle. And the Philistines are Hamites, right? African, so-called African people. It says, And pitched beside Ebenezer. And the Philistines pitched in Aphek. And the Philistines put themselves in array the against Israel. And when they joined battle, Israel was smitten before the Philistines. And they slew of the army in the field about 4,000 men. And when the people were coming to the camp, the elders of Israel said, Wherefore have the Most High smitten, uh, smitten us today before the Philistines? Let us fetch the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord out of Shiloh unto us, that when it cometh among us, it may save us out of the hands of our enemies. So never, uh, you know, uh, Israel needed help in battle. They, you know, get the Ark of the Covenant and was feeding off his energy. All right, feeding off the Most High's uh, a warrior light, that uh, that warlike spirit. All right, uh, if you look up that word. Um, spirit, you know, uh, was the most high was among us through his spirit, through the Ark of the Covenant back then in the ancient world. Look at that word spirit, and um, it'll tell you. Let me just get it real quick. There's an imparting, imparting warlike energy. Okay, let me get this real quick. So I just type in spirit. So if you go down to the outline of biblical usage, it'll go down to, uh, let me see where it said. Uh, yep. It says, imparting warlike energy and executive and administrative power. All right. So the Most High, who was feeding off the Most High's uh, warlike energy because he is a man of war. Correct. So um, he went to fetch the Ark of the Cup. Okay. So it says, Yeah, verse four. So the people went to Shiloh, that they might bring from the hint, from hence the ark of the covenant of the Most High of Hosts, which dwelt between the cherubims, and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phineas, were there with the ark of the covenant of the Most High. When the ark of the covenant of Yahweh Shimei Shai came into the camp, all Israel shouted with a great shout, so that the earth rang again. See that? <laughs> verse six. It, it uh, gave us power, man. You know, it gave us strength to subdue our enemies. Verse six: When the Philistines heard the noise of the shout, they said, "What meaneth the noise of this great shout in the camp of the Hebrews?" <laughs> and they understood that the ark of Yahweh Shemuel Shai was coming to the camp. And the Philistines were afraid, for they said, "The Most High is coming to the camp." And they said, "Woe unto us, for there have not been such a thing." heretofore. Woe unto us, who shall deliver us out of the hand of these mighty gods? These are the gods that smote the Egyptians with all the plagues in the wilderness. You know, and you know that Most High, you know, <laughs> Most High is one, okay? 
and the Most High is a uh, one power, and He works through His Son. You have a shot, because you read uh, John five and um, twenty two, I believe uh, it says, "On the Most High have committed all judgment to His Son." So the Most High work uh, through You have a shot, our Lord and Savior. So it says, uh, "Be strong and quit yourselves like men, O ye Philistines, that ye be not servants to the Hebrews." As they have been to you, quit yourselves like men and fight. And the Philistines fought, and Israel was smitten, and every slack, and they fled every man into his tent. And there was a great slaughter, for there fell of Israel thirty thousand footmen. And the ark of the Most High was taken, and the two sons of Eli, Hophni, and Phineas were slain. And they ran. A oh, man, you know what? I'm just jump to. Uh, I'm going to jump to verse 22. And she said, the ark of the, the glory. He said, she said, the glory is departed from Israel for the ark of the Most High is taken. So uh, the Philistines took the ark of the covenant and brought it to their town. 1 Samuel 5 and 1. And the Philistines took the ark of the, of the Most High and brought, brought it from Ebenezer to Ashdod. But the Philistines took the ark of the Most High. They brought it into the house of Dagon and set it by Dagon. All right. And it's an idol. All right. Uh, of the Philistines, of the heathen. Okay, so uh, you know that the, you know the gods of the nations are idols. You know, they have uh, eyes that see not, you know, ears and hear not, mouth will speak not. You know, it just just you know a work of men's hands. But uh, the Most High is the only one true and living power. He's great and terrible in his acts. And you about to see what the Most High did to the Philistines, man. So it says, verse three, and when they of Ashdod arose early on the morrow, behold, Dagon did mean that idol, was falling upon his face to the earth before the ark of the Lord. And they took Dagon and set him in his place again. And when they arose early on the morrow morning, behold, Dagon was falling upon his falling upon his face to the ground before the ark of the most high. So it happened again two times. He said, but this time he says, and the head of Dagon, both the palms of his hands, were cut off upon the stress the threshold only the stump of Dagon was left to him therefore you know what? let me see if we can also see if let me see what it give us you type in Dagon so I guess basically this is uh, basically what it looked like So basically, the Most High, you know, put put pulled it down, man. You know, the, it was the angels though. The angels around the Ark of the Covenant, and um, while they were asleep, they pushed it down. Man. All right, so it says, uh, and the head of Dagon and both the palms of his hands were cut off upon the threshold. Only the stump of Dagon was left to him. Therefore, neither the priests of Dagon nor any they come to Dagon's house, tread on the threshold of Dagon and, and Ashdod until this day. But the hand of the Most High was heavy upon them of Ashdod, upon these Philistines. And he destroyed them and smote them with emeralds, even Ashdod and the coast thereof. So let's look up the word uh, emeralds. It's, it basically means uh, hemorrhoids. It says emeralds is an archaic term for hemorrhoids, all right? <laughs> if we know what a uh, hemorrhoids is, uh, <laughs> if, so for those of you who do not know, hemorrhoids uh, symptoms. Let's look at that. Let's see what it gives us. It says discomfort is a common symptom, especially during bowel movements or when sitting. Other symptoms include itching or uh, itching and bleeding. So that's what most I was doing unto them, uh, doing unto these uh, people. So it says pain areas in the rectum. <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna tell you how they had uh, pains in the uh, you know the most high smoke smote them in their secret parts. And that's basically in their ass, man. Right, it says pain areas in the rectum. It says pain circumstances 
can occur while sitting, anal discomfort, itchiness, swelling, or bleeding. It's also common. It's a constipation. You ain't gonna get no. Uh... <laughs> so ba that's basically what it is, you know, in the, in the rectum, swollen and inflamed veins. It says swollen, inflamed veins in the rectum and anus that cause discomfort and bleeding. See that? <laughs> so this is what the most high smoke um, these philistines with. Okay. So keep reading. It says. Uh, and smoke them. Verse, continue on to verse six. And smoke them with emeralds, basically hemorrhoids, and even ash dye and all, and the coast thereof. So all the land of the people. All right. It says, and when the men of ash dye saw that it was so, they said, the ark of the Most High of Israel shall not abide with us, <laughs> for his hand is sore upon us and upon Dagon our power. All right. Dagon our God. I mean I. Verse 8, they sent therefore and gathered all the lords of the Philistines unto them and said, What shall we do with the ark of the, ark of the power of Israel? And they answered, Let the ark of the power of Israel be carried about unto Gath. And they carried the ark of the Most High of Israel about thither. And it was so that after they had cried, carried it about, the hand of the Most High was against the city with a very great destruction. And he smote the men of the city, both small and great. And they had emeralds in their secret parts, man. They meaning their, uh, their anus, all right? So verse 10, Therefore, they sent the Ark of the Most High to Ekron, and it came to pass that the Ark of the Most High came to Ekron, that the Ekronites cried out, saying, They have brought the, the Ark of the power of Israel to us to slay us and our people. <laughs> so they, they knew about the Most High power, man. All right? Verse 11, so they sent and gathered together all the lords of the Philistines and said, send away the ark of the power of Israel and let it go into his own place that it slay us not and our people. But there was a deadly destruction throughout all the city. The hand of the Most High was very heavy there. And the men that died not were there smitten with the emeralds. And the cry of the city went up to heaven, man. So... This is a, uh, a ancient act that Yahweh Hashem Al Shai did. So just imagine when the Most High uh, bring forth uh, more plagues or pestilences, okay? Uh, as Yahweh Shai prophesied about, he said that should be uh, wars, rooms of wars, famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. So uh, we ain't seen nothing yet as far as uh, the diseases are concerned. So just imagine if the Most High, uh, you know, smoke, you know. All the you know most of the inhabitants of America with uh, incurable diseases, man. You know diseases that's not even you know uh, that nobody even know about, like you know strange, strange uh, diseases, man. And that's coming, man. That's coming to the shores of Babylon, aka aka America, man. Let's get the book of uh, Psalms. Chapter. Uh, 47 and 2 it says for the most high for the lord most high is terrible he is a great king over all the earth let's get the definition of that for that word terrible it says uh, terrible simple google definition it says extremely or distressingly bad or serious man it says causing or likely to cause terror sinister man yeah, the most high, uh, El, El Shaddai, you know, El, El Shaddai, the terrible demon like power, man. Dreadful, all right? Causing or involving great suffering, man. Because the most high distributed sorrows in his anger, man. Okay? It's, as it's written, causing or involving great suffering, fear or unhappiness, extremely bad or serious, man. Yeah, the most high, serious, man. The most high ain't nothing to play with, man. It's just horrific. Causing horror, horrifying, horrible. Horrendous, atrocious, man. You get the point, okay? See all these, man. The Most High, words can't do it justice, man. Okay? The most High is about to uh, get himself a name on America. Okay? Going back here. Uh, let me jump to uh, Psalms chapter 145 and 1. It says, I will extol thee, O my, my power, O king, and I will bless thee 
bless thy name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Most High, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is, us, is an unsearchable. One generation shall praise your works to another, and shall declare your mighty acts. And that's what we're doing, man. All right, the Most High uh, got certain men set up, you know, that he've, uh, that he've uh, you know, imparted his spirit unto Okay, his Holy Spirit, and he woken, uh, he woken us up, his people, the children of Israel, a, a remnant of the children of Israel in these last days, to declare his works, man. All right, and it says, one generation shall pass, shall praise thy works to another, and shall declare your mighty acts. I will speak of the glorious honor of your Majesty, and of your wondrous works, and men shall speak of the might of your terrible acts, and I will declare your greatness, man. See that Most High is a great man. The Most High, you know, just uh, them, them Israelites that died, they was probably you know the Most High, you know, repaid them for the things that they have done, you know. And uh, when, the, when the Philistines went to war against Israel, and the Most High just had to play out like that, just so he can get him, uh, get his, uh, so so he can exalt his name, man. You know, so he can get fear. Cause the Most High want want people to fear him. Okay, and that's what the inhabitants of the earth. Uh, in today's society, lack they lack the fear of the Lord, okay. But they're gonna learn very soon, okay. They're gonna know we. They're gonna know Yahweh Shem as we know Him, okay. We know the Most High is great and terrible, okay. It says, it says, uh, and men shall speak of the might of thy terrible acts, and I will declare your greatness. It says, uh, they shall abundantly utter the memory of your great goodness. And shall sing of your righteousness, man. See that? We go back here to Psalm 66 and 3. It says, verse 3, Say unto the Most High, how terrible are you in your works. Through the greatness of your power shall your enemies submit themselves unto thee. And that's what we witnessed. Uh, that's what we read, all right? And they submitted themselves like they were scared of the Most High, man. You know, they was trying to, you know, get, get the ark. Get the ark out of their land because the most house fucking their ass up, man. All right? <laughs> they were like, don't bring it to us. <laughs> Shit, I don't want to die either. Shit. You know? <laughs> the most high terrible, man. He great in power, man. The most high power is, is he's infinite, man. And it says, verse 4 All the earth shall worship you and shall sing unto you. They shall sing to your name. See, lot. All right? And that's going to uh, play out in the kingdom of heaven, man. Because the world right now is not uh, singing praise to you. How about you, man? So only his men are. Okay? Uh, the men, it's the sincere men that he raised up. Verse uh, 5. Come and see the works of the Most High. He is terrible in his doing toward the children of men. See that? And the Most High, man, he about to do some, um, some marvelous and terrible works um, on this land, man. Let's get this uh, precept in Isaiah 13, you know, classic scripture. Um, Isaiah chapter 13. This is what's coming. Um, you know, let's just get Zephaniah 1. Uh, Zephaniah. It's like Zephaniah chapter 1 in verse uh says how ye for the day of the most high is at hand all right the days we about to shortly come into okay so it shall come as a destruction from the almighty therefore shall our hands be faint and every man's heart shall melt and how was y'all said too man he said uh you know uh you know men's hearts fell enough for fear after looking upon those things which are coming upon the earth okay verse eight 
and they shall be afraid. Pains and sorrows shall take hold of them, and shall be uh, in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames, man. Because the Most High is about to uh, uh, bring vengeance upon these people. Okay? It says, verse 9, Behold, the day of the Most High cometh. Cruel. Let me get definitions for that word, cruel. Cruel. It says, Willfully causing pain or suffering to others or feeling no concern about it, man. It says, Brutal. Savage. <laughs> Cutthroat. You know, fierce. Monstrous, man. And so that's, that's how the most high about to move on this, uh, move on the beats of Babylonians, man. And the earth, man. So you say, uh, woe to the world and them that dwell their room, man. It says, Behold, the day of the most high cometh, cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners that rub out of it. For the stars of heaven and the constellation thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened. Excuse me. The sun shall be darkened is going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. And I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. Okay. So the Most High is about to do away with all these powerful people. Okay. Of all people. And of the heathen, two thirds. Okay, so the Most High is about to uh, glorify His name again on this earth, and He's about to do it by reason of these, by, uh, it's like by way of these plagues that He's about to send. Okay, so Lord willing, this was edifying. That's all I got for today. Just want to make a little short, you know, quick um, video. Uh, Lord willing, this is edifying. Till next time, shalom.